All right, so if you've been anywhere on the internet recently, you would know that people are buzzing like a pack of bees about a brand new RPG game called Sea of Stars. Now, Sea of Stars is available on Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, and Nintendo Switch. If you're an Xbox owner, it's available on Game Pass. If you're a PlayStation owner, it's available on PlayStation Now. And while I enjoy a good console RPG, I struggle to finish those sometimes. I struggle to invest a lot of time into those sort of RPGs because I just enjoy playing RPGs in handheld mode. So I was more interested in the Nintendo Switch version of the game because when you look at this game, you kind of get those Super Nintendo vibes from the graphics of the game and sort of the style of it, but with the modern twist on it. Now, full disclosure, Sabotage Studio, who is the company behind this game, reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to do a sponsored look at this game. And I was like, Sure, I mean, I was going to play the game anyways, but if you want to give me a bag, I mean, secure the bag, baby. Secure the bag. So today we're going to be talking about Sea of Stars on the Nintendo Switch. I'll have a link in the description box down below for further information. So make sure you guys check that out. But let's see what this game all is all about. Let's see what people are buzzing about this game and if that buzz is justifiable. Now, Sea of Stars, of course, it's an RPG game, so you have a story in the game. I mean, the, the story is fine. Like, it's not nothing too crazy, and I might get a little heat for saying that. Like, it's fine. It's just, you know, I, I, it feels a bit similar to me. You know, kind of, you know, a traditional RPG and how everything works. But one thing I liked about the story is how they tried to do like a prologue like right at the start and you actually experience that prologue because you're playing as the two characters that are involved in it i think that's really cool you there's two characters that are like the main focus of this game called valerie and zale basically they're trying to take down this evil alchemist who's like doing all this sort of stuff they're taking place of some other warriors who have been before them they have to do some trials to show that they are worthy of doing it and then you get into the game itself now along the way you don't just have valerie and zale you have additional characters who end up joining your party and the story plays out nicely you know like i said i don't think it's necessarily groundbreaking or anything like that but it's enough to keep the game going and there are some surprises along the way what i was interested in though is the gameplay of it because really gameplay is king when it comes to an rpg and what was this game going to do differently in terms of the combat system and honestly it does a lot of stuff upon first inspection you're like okay this is a traditional turn-based rpg game but valerie and zale both have unique abilities that are based on different types of light so valerie has the power of the sun and zale has the power of the moon and you could basically take these things and you get a combo meter as you're playing and you could do combo attacks with them now some enemies will be more you know impacted by the sun some enemies will be more impacted by the moon some enemies you actually drop little pieces on and you suck in these pieces and it allows you to do like a charged up attack in order to do more damage if they're not really you know uh, if standard attacks don't really work on them enemies also get a combo system as well that's represented by kind of like a little um like a slot machine bar and it shows you some different icons now if you do the attacks that are listed in the icons you'll actually break the enemy's combo meter i really like this stuff like there's a lot of stuff happening within this that i think is very unique and it's very fresh if you've ever played paper mario you would know that right before you hit an enemy you press the a button and you do an additional sort of damage with your attack and that's the same way that this game works so it's not just like you're going through menus or anything like that you're actually interacting with the combat uh, situations that you're in some of these situations will have you doing like special attacks where like you're volleying something back and forth and you have to be in rhythm to hit the button at the correct time in order to get a bigger attack when an enemy attacks you you can also hit a button in order to sort of dampen the attack so that it doesn't do its full-on damage very 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 cool stuff of course there is a leveling system within the game that gives you baseline stats as you increase your character's levels but one thing i really like is when you increase the level of it you actually get like five different options of an additional thing that you can do so if like so you know some of the things will be like okay i want to add more hp to this character so you can do that or maybe you want to you know focus on a magic defense or something like that it seems like they're kind of randomized and then you just pick the different things in order to suit your character's needs so it constantly keeps things fresh because you know you're always able to 
to do in a little something different with it. And I, I really like that about this game. The boss battles themselves, the ones that I've played thus far, I haven't finished the game yet, but the ones that I've played thus far have been very enjoyable. Some of them can be a little bit tricky, but I like that because there was this one boss battle that happens pretty early on in the game where I kept dying. I died like three times in a row and I couldn't really understand why I was dying, but then I realized they were attacking me with this sort of floating arm thing. And I was like, oh, I need to attack the floating arm so that that way he can't attack me with that. And he only has one baseline attack. So little things like that, that, you know, you don't necessarily think of in an RPG, you know, make a difference in this game. And I, I think it's really, really cool and enjoyable. The world that you're in seems very interesting. Of course, there's things you're doing outside of just standard combat. You, of course, have things like fishing where you can uh, collect different fish in different areas and then harvest them and use them to cook because one of the things you can do in this game is indeed cook you get these basic campsites that you find that are usually near save points and you could sit around the campfire and if you have different ingredients you can actually cook these different items now i think that's really cool you know it's kind of fun because you're looking for different items on the map you'll find like little glowing areas of like different plants and stuff like that and you can harvest different sorts of crops from these plants another thing that's really cool is i like that the game has a bit of platforming in it you know it's not just a traditional where you're just walking on like one plane like you're jumping onto things you're you're falling down onto things you're going into different areas that i think it's really interesting one of the things is like you create these platforms by harvesting the power of light because you can actually control whether it's day or nighttime so using the power of the sun you can uh, uh, create different pads and using the power of the moon you can create different pads in order to progress throughout the game so there's a lot of different things happening within this game that really it sounds like a lot but it really becomes second nature you know once you experience it a few times now one of the things we of course have to talk about is the presentation of the game which i think is absolutely top notch yes it does look sort of like a 16-bit game but to me it feels more like a 32-bit game because of all the little animations and all the little intricacies that are happening. Like, it has that 16-bit sprite style, but it feels like a 16-bit game that would have been on a 32-bit system because I don't see the Super Nintendo doing some of these effects that this game does. I don't see the Super Nintendo, you know, having all these different mechanics going on in it. It definitely feels more like a 32-bit RPG. There's little cutscenes that happen as well that have beautiful animation, and it's just a very impressive package. The music is very well done. I enjoyed most of the sounds. You know, the sound effects all sound really good. So this game, I, I think it definitely lives up to the hype. Like, it it's an enjoyable story, but it's a little bit cliche, but I mean, who cares really? Like, what are you really gonna do in, in in an rpg game it's all about how it plays out and it plays out in a very interesting manner but this combat system and when you get these additional characters and all the abilities that these different characters have because you got to remember valerie and zale are the two chosen characters but you get all these friends that you have along the way that really open up a lot of the combat the combo systems everything about this game like it, it's super enjoyable man like like i was a little bit hesitant i was like okay you know maybe the internet is just hyping up this game you know a little too much people can get very excited for it but i definitely think the hype is is justifiable with this game it, it's a super enjoyable rpg experience i can't wait to finish the game to see how the story ends and what other crazy stuff i come across but i i, I dig it man i i dig it it's it's it feels familiar but fresh at the same time and for someone who lives for nostalgia like me like that is a very good thing so like i said sea of stars is available on every platform under the sun well every modern platform under the sun so if you got an xbox check it out on game pass if you have a playstation check it out on playstation plus if you have a switch definitely check out the switch version of the game you're not losing out on anything such as graphical fidelity or anything like that the game runs buttery smooth on the switch there was no hiccups or issues or anything like that like i said i have a link in the description box down below make sure you guys check out that link for additional information of course we have to give a huge thank you to sabotage studio who is the studio behind the messenger and this actually takes place within the messenger world so if you played the messenger you might be uh be reminded of a few certain things within this world that you're in huge thank you to sabotage studio for sponsoring today's video shout outs to them man you know this game it, you did a great job 
you know, you did a phenomenal job. I saw that the game has already hit 100,000 units sold already. Considering that it's on Game Pass, considering that it's on PlayStation Now or PlayStation Plus, like that's crazy, dude, for a, for a small team and a small RPG. Hey, sky's the limit, baby. Let me know in the comments section down below. Have you played Sea of Stars yet? Are you waiting for the physical version of the game? Because there is a physical version of the game coming out. Make sure you guys check out the link in the description box down below. I can't stress that enough. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, this is your first time here. Welcome. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. Hit the bell notification as well. We're going to be talking about a ton of upcoming games this year. There's so much stuff happening. I'm so excited, but Sea of Stars is definitely a great start to the second half of 2023 as far as banger titles are concerned. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.